Hi, everybody. We have our Spinnaker TOC here. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to all of them. Quick, I am uh, Veronica Mantini. I work for Armory um, in sales and revenue operations. So go B. I'm Gopi Rebola. I'm the CTO of Opsmex. And we've, we've been involved with Spinnaker for a few years now. And we implemented various solutions at different uh, environments. And um, I'm currently, we are currently TOC members. And uh, we're pretty excited right now where Spinnaker is going. Right on. I'm Cameron Motovaslani. I'm a manager over at Armory and on the TOC here at, at Spinnaker as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Cole Duclo, and I'm an architect and senior principal engineer at Autodesk. Uh, and I've been working on our developer platform, more specifically, the deployment side of our platform. And we've been using Spinnaker for a couple years now as the fundamental tool for facilitating deployments for our applications. And I'm David Byron. I work at Salesforce. I've been there for a couple years. Salesforce has been using Spinnaker longer than that. Uh, and yeah, also also on the TOC, and yeah, we uh, we have a lot of, of big Spinnaker installations. Great. So if if we can talk a little bit about how your organization is currently using Spinnaker and what what value you're seeing out of it today, um, maybe yeah, David, if you're comfortable sharing something there. Sure. Uh, yeah. We, uh, Let's see how to, how to say this. Uh, Salesforce uses Spinnaker for sort of all of its all of its cloud deployments. We target uh, lots of Kubernetes clusters. We target lots of um, sort of EC2 direct direct AWS stuff. Uh, it's 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 sort of the paved path for everyone that's migrating from you know first party stuff into the cloud. Uh, every everything happens through Spinnaker. So it, yeah, it's it's the way, and it and reduces a lot of friction. That's great. So our organization at Autodesk is focused primarily on increasing developer productivity and finding ways to reduce all of the toil that exists with deploying, managing, and operating a cloud service. Uh, so we are providing high-level abstractions and opinionated ways of deploying and managing your, your cloud applications. And so through those, ab through th through those abstractions, we end up uh, rendering out deployment pipelines in Spinnaker, which facilitate deployments in a standardized way. Uh, and so that really allows for application engineers to focus more on providing value directly to their customers and not have to worry about things like expanding to new regions or making sure that they're compliant within our compliance programs. Uh, and so we, I think through all of that, we've reduced a lot of toil and allow for them to really operate on all cylinders. Cool. I'm curious, what have your engineers uh, said or what kind of feedback have they given? Uh, so we, like I mentioned before, we have a lot of compliance programs that we have to uh, adhere to and, and, and focus on. And many of those programs have hundreds of requirements and so our deployment platform can cover upwards of like 90% of those uh, compliance requirements. So most of the feedback is related to that, um, where, hey, we should adopt this platform. They're spreading the word throughout our organization. Uh, and here's the real benefits that we're seeing. We don't have to worry about managing certificates, or we don't have to worry about uh, ensuring that our S3 buckets have all of these policies attached to them. That all just comes out of the box. Observability comes out of the box. Um, so yeah, that's the big win. Awesome, thanks for sharing. Cameron. Yeah, we, we use Spinnaker uh, a, quite a bit actually internally at, at Armory. Um, so we, we are a vendor and we, we have an enterprise version of Spinnaker. But one thing that we do, it's, it's, which is pretty cool, Matt Gogerly, uh, also another TOC member, gave a talk on this, or is giving a talk on this, about uh, deploying Spinnaker with Spinnaker. So we use we use Spinnaker to deploy Spinnaker all the time, and it's a it's it's really cool uh, for for testing proof of concepts, etc., um, spinning up developer environments, so on and so forth. Yeah, we 
we also spin, use Spinnaker a lot internally. Uh, but our primary target platform is Kubernetes, and we run, run it in uh, multiple cloud environments. Uh, but we also have some AWS EC2 internally. Uh, we are a literally small company, so we, we don't have uh, a big, large amount of the developer onboarding kind of problems with that. But we extensively use Spinnaker internally. Great, thanks for sharing. So I know that uh, we had the really great opportunity this year of meeting a little bit sooner. Uh, since the last Spinnaker Summit, it was only six months ago in Detroit. I think uh, a lot of people here were probably there. Um, what can you share that's been accomplished uh, since that Spinnaker Summit? I know a big focus was around bringing together uh, the TOC and all the SIGs and trying to build out the community a bit there. Uh, it, yeah, I think that's... <clears throat> Since the last Spinnaker Summit, I think one of the big things is we got together. <laughs> uh, we've been doing regular meetings and uh, knowing where we are going. A uh, few of the big things that happened are the release process, and we had multiple releases since then. And we're also talking about the new features and tech debt. Uh, one thing that we also found is organizations built their own systems in the last couple of years when during the COVID, where we were not meeting as regularly. Uh, and after the Netflix and Google step back a little bit, now we are seeing there's a huge amount of uh, features that are built in internal organizations. So it will be interesting to see how we can get some of this out into the open source. Yeah, one, one of the features we, we released in this last, um, in our last major release in 130 was uh, more fine grained uh, Azure baking. So we'd like to support Azure a bit more as a platform. And uh, that's the first steps along along that route. And I can add to the, the Azure bit. So Autodesk has fairly recent um, business opportunities that require us to look at Azure. And we've been partnering with Armory and, and hopefully providing Azure as more of a first class citizen within uh, Spinnaker. So I think that partnership has been going great and we are in the process of baking, I think they call them Azure machine images, so the same AMI terminology as AWS. Um, but yeah, we've been looking to scale that out and, and really be able to support the teams that require it within Autodesk. Uh, so there's, I think, new and exciting things to look for there. Yeah, I'll give a little bit of a pitch. I have a talk at 210, which is going to be you know, specific to what we've been doing at Salesforce and what we're uh, doing soon. But yeah, it's, a lot of it's very focused on, on performance improvements. Uh, we've done some sort of more boring stuff, upgrading Spring Boot uh, and preparing to upgrade uh, Gradle and Java and so on. Um, yeah, 210, right here in this room. So, uh, along with the, uh, Azure, I think the Cloud Run, which is a Google serverless model, is also the new entrant to the Spinnaker support. Great, so it sounds like I think in the last six months a lot has been accomplished. Uh, David gave me a little bit of a preview of that talk. Be sure to come by and hear that. Sounds like really exciting developments there. I guess looking forward at the next year um, into new focus areas and initiatives, areas that you think might need additional support from the community and things that uh, you're looking to build out. Can you share a little bit about where you're looking to focus? Sure. I think one of so a few of the things that we've been discussing are the tech debt. Um, I think getting the Spinnaker up to date with the latest technologies, or particularly for vulnerabilities and maintainability and things like that. So that those include Java, uh, Spring Boot, and some of the libraries that go with the Spinnaker. And yeah. there, there's a. I think this is where we're gonna the right time to talk about this, but we're, uh, Cameron mentioned in his, his talk a little bit ago that we're trying to consolidate all the Git repos into one. Uh, I think it's gonna make, yeah, contributing easier and just generally improve the velocity for new contributors and existing contributors. It's gonna improve quality. One of the things that we're uh, also working on is some some additional testing. Uh, when, the, when the sort of old build infrastructure disappeared, uh, we had some, some more testing like that and uh, when we moved it over to GitHub Actions, we lost that, but we are we are uh, real soon now here gonna, gonna get some back. So we, we do try hard 
you know, when, it, when we release a new version of Spinnaker, we, we're pretty confident that, you know, it's going to work and it doesn't break things, but of course things happen. And so we're, you know, just like we try to get everybody else doing, we're tr trying to left shift some of that and, uh, yeah, raise quality. Yeah, just to, to tag along there, uh, uh, adding integration and end-to-end -end testing back to the OSS community and making the results of the testing transparent to pull request authors. So when you make a change to the, the code base, it's you want to have some confidence that your changes are, are working fine. Um, in the past, this was not transparent at all. It was very opaque, and you had to be in a certain Google group, et cetera, to see the results of these builds, and we'd like to make that quite a bit more transparent. So when we came together, one of our um, largest initiatives or goals that we were hoping to target was really reviving the community of Spinnaker, which Cameron touched on in his presentation earlier. Um, and so I guess what we can ask for of the community is let us know what, what are the pain points, what are some things that you'd love to see uh, from the Technical Oversight Committee and where we should take the direction of Spinnaker. Uh, and, and that'll really help us guide where we want to invest our time and energy. Um, but I know there are certain things, like we had mentioned here, to make it easier to build Spinnaker locally, to contribute back to it, um, and, and hopefully those are some, some of those baby steps that we can take to really revive the community. And I know that we're looking towards uh, graduating from the CD Foundation as well, uh, so there might be some opportunities to help the Spinnaker community in that aspect. Uh, things like f fixing or cleaning up some of the documentation, uh, looking at security auditing and, and, and how we can improve that process uh, and start to meet all their criteria that's that's needed to make that graduation happen. And to add to that, I think <coughs> there are two aspects to Spinnaker, what we've been thinking. Uh, one is the operational aspect and then the functionality. Uh, so most of the focus has been about the operational aspect, whether to run it more efficiently or make it more easy to deploy or or build to test the process. So right now, because of the backlog we have, we're very much focused on that. That includes the getting to the proper installer that we can recommend to the customers that's easy to use. Now, in the functional aspects, again, I think some of the integrations with respect to Azure or uh, Cloud Run, uh, those are another things that Lambda is another one, I think, that's coming through. And so there is going to be improvements there as well, but there's a lot more focus on the operational aspect as well. And going back to getting more involved in the community or giving feedback to the TOC in order to see changes that um, the community would like to see, what's the best way to do that? What's the best way to get in touch with you guys? What's the best way to um, get more involved to contributing? Yeah, we have a, a governance repo in GitHub under the Spinnaker org, and it has a calendar of all the SIG meetings that, that occur. Um, so the platform SIG meets um, every other week. Uh, the, the cloud SIG, I believe, also meets every, every other week. We also have uh, TOC and SIG lead syncs, so we, we chat quite a bit with the, the SIG leads that, that do come and join. Um, yeah, and there's also Spinnaker Slack, so uh, for to hit us up async, we're all we're all there. Um, I don't actually know if there's a if there's like a TOC alias if somebody wants it, somebody wants to send a message to all of us or something. Maybe we need to set one of those up. Um, but we're all I don't know we're all pretty available. Um, yeah, uh, so the cloud sync meets once a month, uh, but and then we have platform sync. Uh, we we used to have uh, Azure separated from Google and AWS. Now they're all merged in one. That's a cloud sync. Uh, right now we're running once a month, depending on the interest we could change it to once in two weeks. All right, so for anyone that might be a little bit uh, here to explore Spinnaker or newer to Spinnaker, um, obviously this group, uh, you guys are more <laughs> experts in the space. What do you think you would like to see in terms of like how could we increase um, adoption or lower the barrier to entry um, to starting out with Spinnaker? And overall, how do we improve ease of use for the community? Uh, simplified installation is, is a good start. Uh, having certain preset parameters that they can 
quickly install and have it first pipeline running. Mm. Typically, the, the getting the first one or two pipelines running is the, the barrier. Uh, making that simpler is uh, one way, I guess. Um. Yeah, even like seeding uh, uh, new ins installations with you know uh, some some pipelines. Uh, right now, Spinnaker, one of the, the strengths is really uh, codified best practices. Um, each stage has code that does the job of that stage pretty well. Um, that That's why we're in open source, is we get the best practices from the community, and then we codify them. Um, if we do the same with uh, a you know, golden path, let's say, to deploying to AWS in a very simple way, uh, new users could potentially just get up and running and and seeing how the, the whole process works. Yeah, and I'll also add that um, it's a bit of a kind of a chicken and an egg situation, but we'd love to see those that are active in the community creating demo videos or uh, blog posts or how-to types of articles. Uh, and that, I think, will also greatly help lower that barrier to entry, show the power of Spinnaker, what you can do with it, um, and, and even interact with newer tools that are coming into the market, uh, like Tekton and Argo CD. So uh, definitely encourage folks to explore that space. And it sounds like going back to giving the TOC feedback on what, uh, what areas you're struggling with for ease of use, um, that that is where uh, the TOC focuses a lot of their time figuring out where to invest. So again, um, at the end of this, we can make sure maybe an alias is created there to reach out to the TOC, but giving feedback on what areas you might be struggling with or needing help with can really help give direction to this group. Um, so looking, looking at the last six months, what tre major trends or uh, patterns have you noticed within your organization, the marketplace in general with Spinnaker uh, that might be valuable for this group to know? So for Autodesk, we're very interested in moving to more of a declarative GitOps deployment model. Um, and we're researching and hopefully building out a, what we're calling a unified control plane. Um, so I'd love to see where Spinnaker fits into an ecosystem like that. Uh, I know that we've done some proof of concepts with um, managed delivery, which is Spinnaker's solution or, or answer to kind of get ops there. Um, and in that proof of concept, we quickly realized that Kianta wasn't quite ready yet for production use. Um, there's still some things around documentation that we need to make sure is available so that folks can use it. And we need to make sure that it's also being maintained by um, engineers and, and those that are uh, interested in that in the community. And then in addition to that, um, we also learned as part of that proof of concept that there's a bit of growth that we need within our organization to be ready for something like GitOps. Uh, so we are likely going to take kind of baby steps to get there, and I think Spinnaker can be really valuable in, in helping us achieve those longer-term GitOps declarative types of architectural visions. You were, I think you mentioned Kayanta, but maybe you meant Keel instead. These are like individual Spinnaker microservices, but I think people use Kayanta in production a lot, and maybe not as much Keel, which is the managed delivery component. Yeah, sorry, Keel. Managed delivery and Keel. Uh, Cole, do you mind sharing a little bit, that, you know, if you're comfortable, like you said, that there's things that need to be done in order to get more towards that model internally? Like what, uh, for this group, might they be looking for within their own organizations of, okay, we're not quite there, but we need to get people ready, and what maybe are you doing to get people more ready for that, whatever you're comfortable sharing? Yeah, the, the biggest thing for us is having our application engineers trust the platform that we're building. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're offering that delightful experience that we try to advertise and people trust the platform and want to come on board and rather it be uh, more of a stick situation where you're kind of hammering them and, and getting them onto the plat platform, you're offering carrots and uh, they come to you and say, hey, we want to on board. 
So trust is certainly something that we're doubling down on, making sure that Spinnaker is reliable, making sure all of the tooling that we have around Spinnaker is reliable, uh, and we're focusing on providing immediate value for our application teams. And then by earning their trust, that gives us the time and the opportunity to make changes, these drastic changes, like moving to something along the lines of a unified control plane or declarative GitOps types of models. So yeah. If I can ask one more follow-up yeah. question. Uh, what you said, building trust with them is obviously really important. Like what's one example of something that you've done to build trust that other people could try? Uh, so one great example right now is we are uh, scaling Spinnaker greatly and we have reached some scaling pain points. Um, and so we're partnering again with Armory to figure out what are some of the best practices around our pipeline architecture. Uh, are there additional ways that we can provide a more reliable, stable, and fast Spinnaker environment? Um, so like a, a perfect example was, uh, I think there was a pull request that got introduced in Spinnaker 1.28, I want to say, around uh, removing duplicate service accounts. And those service accounts were, uh, I think, upwards of a million or two in our environment. And it was causing a lot of slowness and a lot of instability. So we, um, by, again, working with Armory and, and upgrading to Spinnaker, that particular version, we were able to reduce the, uh, the risk that those had introduced and offer a much better experience through the Spinnaker UI because things were running smoothly. Great, thanks for, sorry for picking on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are a lot of performance improvements coming in Spinnaker. David will talk a little bit more. The other trend we also see is this integrated uh, platform, the, the, the control plane that you're mentioning, for onboarding users and onboarding applications uh, and providing them a single interface where they can go to to get the data on. So this is uh, something that we're seeing more in medium to large organizations where they have some platform that gives a central view on how to get onboarded new services, applications, and the users. And then the pipeline templates, some standard ones, 80-20 rule is generally creating certain number of templates for their organization that go to target environments and having them onboarded through that central platform. This is a, a new trend that we're seeing more often now. All right, so I think Cole started talking about GitOps a little bit. Obviously, we are co-located here with GitOpsCon, so that is a hot topic this week. Uh, what can more can we share about what's been done to support GitOps or areas that you'd like to explore that maybe haven't been looked at quite yet? So uh, it was a few years ago, actually, we had introduced the secret manager into the uh, Spinnaker code base. So that was one of the first steps or I guess, I don't know if it was one of the first steps, but maybe one of the last steps on the uh, operationalizing GitOps for, for Spinnaker. What I mean by that is um, when we added the secret manager to the Spinnaker code base, you're able to reference secrets rather than having secrets straight in your configs. So you're able to have your complete configuration for deploying and managing Spinnaker in a Git repo, uh, which is pretty powerful stuff. Um, not having passwords directly in your configs was the, the last thing that was needed for uh, compliance for deploying Spinnaker in a GitOps model. That is not the same as deploying your application in a GitOps model, and so th that's something that we're going to be working on. Yeah. So as Cole mentioned, managed delivery is one of the ways you can through key do the GitOps model. But the way we also think about the GitOps model is uh, having the Git as your primary source and deploying from there. Right? The second part of it is auto-synchronization. So the managed delivery part tries to be the second one. But the first part where you have the Git as a source of truth and having that deployed through the Spinnaker and the, all the facilities that are required for that are there. Um, so even in the GitOps models, it's very 
useful for the operations. So you have something running in production, you have a git that deploys it. But there are processes that are, we have to go through to get to that state. So there's, they're requiring pipelines, and the Spinnaker uh, really works well in creating those pipelines and having those processes figured out. And then you can apply that to a git that applies to production. Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to repeat what Gopi just said. Uh, if I, I forget who was giving the talk uh, yesterday morning, and there was a sort of like four four levels of four levels of GitOps, and the last one, I, I guess I'm maybe going to oversimplify and call drift drift detection or like reconciliation. But and so and this is the managed delivery part uh, that people are talking about. But the the earlier parts where like something happens in Git and and you want to trigger a deployment, yeah, Spinnaker's been set up to do that uh, for a long time, uh, either via webhooks connecting GitHub uh, to Spinnaker, or you know pulling Docker registries when a new Docker image appears or a new Helm chart appears. All of those things uh, can already trigger Spinnaker pipelines and and get your deployment happening. And Kubernetes is a declarative environment, so it's a very good fit for declarative spec. So, but we have other environments or using Terraform, bringing up the infrastructure. AWS EC2, those are much harder to do. So for those, again, having the Git as a source of truth and something like a Spinnaker deploying to those environments would work as well. And you can also have your pipeline saved as code as well. So um, you can have the, the operational part um, that your developers interact with also saved in, in a Git repo. Great, thanks for sharing. So we, we started talking about managed delivery a little bit. Um, I think Cole gave a little bit about what it is, um, the gaps that are seen there within Autodesk specifically. Uh, can we go a little bit more into managed delivery for the group in detail, uh, what, what we're seeing with it and benefits, et cetera? Yeah, so I'll kind of double down on what I said earlier. Um, so through our proof of concept with managed delivery, um, we felt that it's heading in the right direction, um, but it's not quite mature enough for us to use it at a production scale. Um, and one of those biggest things was around documentation. Um, we had to basically read the code to, to understand what was happening there. Um, so in order for, I think, the community, community to help evolve managed delivery, uh, we need to make sure that we have proper documentation in place and it's easy to understand and consume. Um, and then also look towards the future of like where, where can we start to use other tools that already have uh, GitOps and declarative solutions in place and maybe offer um, further integrations or integrations perhaps maybe through CD events or something along those lines. All right. So I guess uh, from this group, again, we've already talked about trying to solicit some feedback uh, on areas that we'd like to see improvements, et cetera. Anything that you all can ask from our Spinnaker community and everybody that's potentially watching this virtually, of what they can do to be a little bit more active or help out in general. Yeah, please uh, please join some of the SIG meetings if, if you have any thoughts or ideas about how you'd like to see Spinnaker improve. Um, one thing I've, I've seen over time is companies will um, be using Spinnaker and it might be lacking in some way and they'll, they'll come up with a workaround but then we don't hear about the workaround. So understanding these workarounds that people are, are making uh, and getting that back to, to us would be great because then we'd be able to say, hey, look, there's these workarounds all these people are making. Why don't we just integrate that into the product and, and make it better? So um, please please join and give feedback, uh, create Spinnaker issues, um, et cetera. Are there any SIGs in particular that are really um, looking for additional leadership or contributors or needing help? Oh yeah, totally. So I would say the contributor experience SIG would, would be a great one to, to check out as well as the, the doc SIG. Both of those um, need some leads and are some areas that I think would, would help greatly help the community.
And I guess just for everybody's confidence for barrier to entry, like wh what type of person would be an ideal participant for that? Like what type of skills or role, uh, level of experience, et cetera? Totally, those are, those are all great questions. Um, let's see. So I think for the, the doc sig, any, anyone who's a, a tech writer or has um, any experience with technical writing would be a, a great choice. Um, the contributor experience sig, um, people who are, are great with well, people, and um, have some sort of a technical background. Um, more than happy to help anyone who wants to lead, lead those SIGs uh, with their efforts. So uh, please reach out if you are interested and uh, want any help getting started. Great, thanks. And, and of course, you know, people who write code, uh, we can always use more of that too. <laughs> there. If one thing I would say is that here we have people who have a lot of experience with Spinnaker running it fairly large, large scale. Uh, so if you're using Spinnaker, any issues, you know, this is the right group or SIG meetings are the right place to come. And you, whatever kind of questions you have, most likely you'll get an answer. So just hearing the problems that you have is also a good start for us. Yeah, the, I forget whether it was just before or just after the, the meeting in Detroit, uh, but there is a weekly, in fact, I probably missing it right now, or about to miss it, uh, at 12.30 on every Tuesday is the Spinnaker office hours. And it's been, let's say, poorly attended. Uh, you know, I show up at 12.30, and I wait for five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and when nobody joins, then I, I bail. Uh, but I'm sitting there. I'm ready to answer questions or talk about whatever anybody wants to talk about. Uh, again, I'm trying to, trying to make it easy if, like, you don't know what – which sig to go to? Like you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. Just show up, and it's a totally open forum, and uh, we'll get you. We'll get you in the right direction. Great, thanks for sharing. Any any other call to actions from the group, or anything you'd like to say to the community before we wrap up? The changes that we've seen in the last six months are pretty exciting. I'd like to repeat that. So performance improvements and the scale that people have been running. It's uh, Amazing. So uh, look forward to the rest of the year and see what progress we can make there. I'm also just looking forward to working together across organizations here. So we have uh, many different companies that are actively using Spinnaker and active in the community too. So um, it's exciting to see hopefully that momentum of reviving the community uh, come to fruition. And if, if it wasn't clear, that we are not the entire TOC. There are more folks uh, on the committee that are not here on the panels, uh, people from Apple and people from J.P. Morgan. So what Cole is saying is, is totally right. We've got, I don't know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of momentum. I feel like we're, we're, we're doing well. Definitely some big strides since last year, I think, or six months ago, not a year ago. Any insight into the next opportunity the community will be getting together for Spinnaker Summit? or uh, look out for more information to come there? Yeah, I think look, look out for some more info to come. Um, I uh, believe we'd, we'll have another event later this year, um, but we'll be working with the CDF and the Linux Foundation to, to set that up. Great. Well, thank you everybody for coming. And again, please reach out if there's anything that you'd like to contribute. Otherwise, uh, these guys will be here too. And David's got a talk later. Does anybody else have a talk that they want to? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, David and Gopi both have talks. Kevin, do you have anything else? Okay, great. Well, thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks. Thank you.